Show your support. Follow me on Twitter. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to another booking video. I realise it's been a little while since my last booking video. Last month just sort of got on top of me and I didn't even really have any time to write anything relevant or coherent, let alone record and edit it. But we are back again and I aim to do my best to make sure that this is a monthly series going forward. So, this month's video sees us using NXT to revive a certain lacklustre tag team. We start off post NXT TakeOver 25. The Street Profits are the NXT Tag Team Champions after winning in that Four Corners ladder match. So we are building towards NXT TakeOver Toronto 2 SummerSlam weekend. Now on that card the Street Profits will be defending their NXT Tag Team titles. And fairly early on in the tapings we will be having a three-way match between the Forgotten Sons, Only Larkin and Danny Birch, and the Undisputed Era to work out who is going to be the number one contenders for the tag titles. And this match is won by the Forgotten Sons. So we know going forward it will be the Street Profits taking on the Forgotten Sons for the NXT tag titles at Toronto 2. And what we just need to do for the weeks running up to that is to book both teams as strong as is possible, ideally with the Forgotten Sons getting as many wins as possible without the help of Jackson Riker, but by all means we can introduce him into any kind of post-match beatdowns, things like that. So going into the show at Toronto, both teams are on a bit of a hot streak. We have an excellent match. Jackson Riker doesn't get too involved and doesn't sway things too much. And the Street Profits come away with the victory. And while the Street Profits are celebrating in the ring, we hear some music we haven't heard in NXT for a little while. We hear the music for The Ascension. Remember those guys? Those guys that don't make it on TV anymore. Those guys who on the main roster have completely died a death. Those guys who to this day have the single longest reign with the tag team titles in NXT. So they make their way down to the ring and they're not really paying too much attention to the Street Profits but they are fixated on the belts. And they give a very very hard kind of pat on the shoulder but on the actual title belt itself to the Street Profits, almost kind of knocking them back a step. And they're just kind of staring into the belts, really. They're just addressing and focused on the tag team titles. So we move on to the tapings between Toronto 2 and War Games. I'm presuming it's going to be War Games again. It seems to be a staple for Survivor Series weekend in NXT. It doesn't really play into things here as the War Games match, if there is one, can be utilised elsewhere on the card. And on the first set of tapings we have a scheduled tag team match. Doesn't really matter between who, ideally guys that aren't too high up on the card because the match itself never ever takes place. The Ascension come down and destroy both teams and just kind of soak in the NXT crowd. Hopefully they'll be quite hot for their return at full sale. Now a couple of weeks down the line, because ideally we want to kind of get this feud going on maybe alternate weeks as most things do on NXT so as not to completely oversaturate it. Obviously, if we're running out of weeks, we can kind of do a week-to-week -week thing the closer we get to TakeOver. But we've got plenty of time to build this up in the months between SummerSlam and Survivor Series. Anyway, the Street Profits come out and they don't really acknowledge what happened post-match at TakeOver. Obviously, they put over the match that they had with Forgotten Sons. But that is done now. That's in their rearview mirror. They're looking forward to 
the next challenge effectively and Cutler and Blake come out on the ramp and kind of postulate that this isn't over between them. The Street Profits on the other hand are sure in their mind that this is done between them. They beat them in the ladder match, they beat them again at Toronto and they're going to make sure that they have a word with William Regal to set up new challenges for them to face going forward. And just as this is wrapping up, Jackson Riker jumps both of them from behind and starts beating on them and then obviously Cutler and Blake come in to make sure that they have the numbers advantage. Just putting over the fact that the Forgotten Sons definitely don't think that this is over between them and the Street Profits, even if the Street Profits do think that this is finished for now. Now back over on the side of the Ascension, they make an appearance in a couple of weeks time and just remind everyone that they are still the team with the longest reigning individual run in NXT with the tag team titles. They are clearly the pinnacle of tag teams within the history of NXT. They've been gone for about five years and still their record remains intact basically calling out the entire history of the NXT tag team division and saying what the hell is wrong with you guys, how have you not beaten our record yet. This provokes the Undisputed Era to come out, specifically a Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly, because the Undisputed Era have the longest combined title run and they put that over. And again, just as these two teams are kind of back and forth with each other, Roderick Strong tries to jump the Ascension from behind, much like Jackson Riker did to the Street Profits, only he is unsuccessful and gets absolutely destroyed by the Ascension, so that Kyle O'Reilly and Bobby Fish kind of have to guide him out of the arena. So what we have at the moment are kind of two mini feuds going on, one between the Street Profits and the Forgotten Sons, and the other one on the other side between the Undisputed Era and the Ascension. A little while later there is a number one contenders match announced, however the Ascension are not part of this match. And they take this up with William Regal, who claims that he didn't really realise that they were properly within the NXT bracket, he just assumed that they were a wild card because they're kind of appearing sporadically. They're not here all the time. They're there maybe every other, every third week. And he can't possibly justify letting a Raw team become the number one contenders for the NXT tag team titles. Because if they win them, they could very easily take them to Raw and never be seen again. And that would be absolutely catastrophic for NXT. When the Ascension explained that actually they have been in talks with Triple H. And they have made sure that they are actually part of the NXT roster. And are no longer affiliated with Raw or Smackdown Live. William Regal essentially cuts them a deal. He will put them in that number one contenders match so long as they win a match to earn passage into it. However, during that match, it is basically thrown out because the Forgotten Sons make sure they interfere to basically strengthen their odds because they are in that number one contenders match and they don't want the Ascension getting in on the deal. So what we end up having is a number one contenders match between the Undisputed Era and the Forgotten Sons and the Ascension make sure to interfere within that match to basically screw over the Forgotten Sons in the same way that they were screwed over so that match gets thrown out as well. So what we get for NXT TakeOver War Games is a Four Corners Elimination match. William Regal makes sure it's an elimination match just so that there is no question as to who the rightful winners will be. It will be the Street Profits defending their NXT Tag Team Championships against the Forgotten Sons, the Undisputed Era and the Ascension. And in that match the Street Profits managed to eliminate the Forgotten Sons and the Ascension managed to eliminate the Undisputed Era kind of putting to bed those two mini feuds that we had going on 
So the last two teams left are the Street Profits and the Ascension, and the Ascension win and pick up the NXT Tag Team titles. At the first set of tapings after War Games, they make sure to come out with the old style NXT Tag Team titles, the belts that they held for 344 days. And they successfully defend these belts against the Street Profits at NXT TakeOver Houston Royal Rumble weekend. By this time, they have also surpassed the Undisputed Era for combined reign as well. So they still hold the longest time with the belts in a single reign, and now they hold the longest reign with the belt all combined together in total. And because they have well and truly cemented themselves within the NXT history books, they will then drop the belts at NXT TakeOver Tampa, the weekend of WrestleMania 36. However, we don't see them enter the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. We don't see them as part of the Superstar Shake-Up in the post-Raw and Smackdowns after WrestleMania 36. They remain a staple of NXT. They remain as a strong NXT tag team. Occasionally, they could become number one contenders, but ideally from this point they can be used to build other teams and put them over on the other team's way to winning tag team gold. But that way they will be featured in high profile matches. If they are number one contenders, they will still get matches at things like takeovers every now and then. And they will get plenty of featured matches and main events on normal NXT tapings. Obviously making sure to refer to their time in the history books with the tag team titles. Also when they drop the belts we can revert them back to the updated design. So there we go, that is my booking idea for using NXT to kind of revive the fortunes of the Ascension. At the moment they're not even getting TV time and with a return to NXT like Tyler Breeze has done can be a real shot in the arm for them and they can be seen as a legitimate threat once more like they were when they were there years before. Please let me know what you think of this booking idea in the comments below. If you've got any ideas for what you want me to book in the future, please also let me know. But until next time, I have been that British guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.